Hello everyone, my name is Matt Smith, Senior Applications Engineer at Shunk, Shunk USA. I'm here today to talk with you about magnetic gripping systems. I'd like to give you a little overview on what magnetic gripping systems is, then we'll talk about some of the, some of the components that are available. We'll have some demonstration on work pieces, and uh, then if you have any questions, please type those into the chat box. We have a team of uh, staff here that'll answer your questions as we go. First, I'd like to give you an overview of what magnetic gripping is. In general, magnetic gripping can be considered like an electric circuit, where you have a magnet with a north and a south pole, similar to this. And when you introduce a workpiece between the two poles, it completes the circuit and holds the part. Magnetic gripping is, uh, is safe, safe from dropping parts. When uh, the magnet is activated, it will stay activated until you reverse the process and deactivate it. So you uh, don't have to worry about dropping parts if there's a power failure. So some of the advantages of gripping with magnets are that you can grip without damage to the part. Because we're not actually applying force like a parallel gripper, we're actually just adhering that part to the surface of the work piece or of the, of the magnet. Now there's less damage to the part. Um, the, now, one of the things that uh, we have to be careful of is the performance of the magnetic uh, grip depends on the workpiece itself. So you can see here, I've got several workpieces. Uh, for instance, this one is very thin. We've got thicker workpieces like this. So the thicker the workpiece in general, the better the hold. Uh, we can adjust the magnet and not really actually adjust the magnet uh, per se, but we can adjust which magnet we choose for which workpiece uh, for the performance. So what we have in front of us here is we've got a bipole magnet. Uh, we have north and south pole. This is typically what we refer to as a bipole magnet. And then we have three others here that are called monopole magnets. Uh, these are typically or actually uh, a bipole where you have a north and a south, but the north is the center body and the south is the outer body. The difference between these is that a north, the north and pow, uh, south bipole magnet generally has a deeper penetration and we would use this magnet for thicker parts, whereas the monopole magnets are better for thinner parts and we'd select those for the thinner parts. So the um, uh, so I'd like to to give a demonstration uh, on the monopole magnet. So what we're what I have here is a controller that I can activate and deactivate the magnet. I've got various work pieces here that I will uh, demonstrate. So to start with, we can use the thin piece. When we activate this magnet on the thin piece, what I like to do is look at the magnetic performance, make sure it's plugged in, not necessarily how well the, the workpiece sticks to it like this, but what we're looking at is the force it takes to slide. Because what we're looking at with magnetic gripping systems is that uh, we're not actually clamping onto the part with a like serrated jaws, we're depending on coefficient of friction from uh, keeping that workpiece from slipping out or slipping off of the magnet. So the true test of a magnet on how well it holds is how well it prevents the part from sliding. Now we have this thin piece on there, it takes a given amount of force to pull that. Um, but when I take a look at the ability for it to pick up two pieces, we can see that the magnetic flux is penetrating through this thin workpiece into the workpiece behind it. So if we switch to a thicker workpiece, and do the same test, we can see that there's no residual magnetism that's not being used and it's completely embodied in the part. So that would be a good magnet for that thickness of workpiece. And if we go with the thickest workpiece of all, this has good penetration. And I try to pull this, you can clearly see that it's very difficult for me to pull this. In fact, I can hardly move it at all. So now we have excellent workpiece to magnet characteristics and we're able to hold that piece very well. Now the products you see in front of you here uh, vary a little bit in design. Uh, these magnets right here are from, uh, they were created uh, over generations of different of work holding magnets. 
Uh, it's the same type of technology we've been using for years in the work holding industry, but it's in a smaller size. They operate on 480 volts and they have very good power to weight ratio. It's a very lightweight magnet for the performance that it provides. The newer series uses the same type, same type of technology, but it operates on 24 volt DC. Not only did uh, we incorporate the same design into this and give it 24 volt capability, but we also added features such as part presence sensing. So now when there's a magnetic or when there's a workpiece on here, we can detect it. Uh, we can also vary the power so that you can increase the power and gradient in, in four steps. Um, and this is useful if you're going to pick one workpiece off of another. You can gently lift it up and separate, and then you can magnetize fully and then carry it at an acceleration. So one of the other differences between monopole magnets like this and a bipole magnet is the ability for this magnet to adapt pole extensions. Pole extensions would allow us to configure the work face to the part. So you can see the magnet, uh, if we're trying to pick up a cylindrical part, the, the part would roll back and forth on, work, on the face of the magnet. By adding a pole extension, now we have a device that can capture that and hold it very, uh, very securely as we carry it. So the bipole magnets in general are configured from the factory so that you can add pole extensions. We do have some pole extensions available for the monopoles, but it's not as, uh, not as easy to do with a monopole magnet as it is with a bipole magnet. So I'd also like to talk a little bit about air gap. So air gap would be uh, anything that could be on the workpiece like rust, paint, epoxy, mill scale, a rough surface from rough machining, any, any of that could introduce air gap between the magnet and the workpiece. So I have a demonstration here where I can use the thin piece again on this magnet that we've seen before, and I'm going to introduce air gap of just one, uh, the thickness of one business card. So you can see I can pull this very easily. Um, the introduction of air gap will reduce the performance of the magnet by up to 70% with as little as a half a millimeter, just one business card thickness can reduce the holding force by 70%. So, does that mean we can't use magnetics? No, not necessarily. What that does mean though, is that if I would normally use one magnet, uh, now I might have to use two or three to get the same performance. So we just need to know that ahead of time and we can help you with that, that configuration. Um, so with the 24 volt magnet system, um, it op operates similarly where we have the bipole magnet or uh, the monopole magnet, I'm sorry. And you can see this has a tremendous hold. Despite the size, these magnets have very good power to weight ratio. OK, so um, I've given a pretty good overview here on, on what magnetic grouping is. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type those into the chat box, and I'd be glad to answer those. Um, with that, um, I guess if there's yeah, any questions. I do have one question, Matt. Um, okay. Asking if you can show the face of the magnet to the camera. So sure. You can okay. Around and kind of show more of an in-depth view of the, of the magnet. Great. Okay. So this is a bipole magnet where we have north and south pole. Uh, inside the magnet, we have two types of magnets that generate the on and off circuit. This is a monopole. It does have a square in the center and then the outer body is the uh, negative pole or the, the south pole. This magnet uh, has a very narrow pole and the characteristics of this magnet is very good in that we can pick up uh, small parts. So with flux patterns, when you have a flux pattern that's jumping from north to south with a very large magnet like this, the flux pattern can be very deep and you'll have deep penetration. And that's good if you have thick parts, but if you have thin parts, then it's better to have a smaller magnet face like this or smaller pole so that the flux pattern has shorter, a shorter place uh, or a shorter distance to jump. It makes it a smaller 
uh, smaller distance. And then this one is more of a bullseye shape. Same concept where we have the North Pole in the center and the South Pole on the outside. OK. OK, great. Thank you very much for attending today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those into the chat box, send them into the info, and uh, we'd be glad to get back with you. Thank you.